Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a subscriber recently asked me if it was possible to receive and decode GPS signals using an SDR receiver. Well, the answer to that is yes. Now we need two pieces of software which are both supported on Linux and as well as Windows. But in this video, I'll be using Windows 10. Now the software only supports RTL SDR based SDRs for a direct connection. And this video, I'll be using the RTL SDR.com version three SDR. Now the antenna that I'm going to be using is a ready made patch antenna for receiving GPS signals. Now I purchased this on Amazon for around $10. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this from if you don't already own one. Now the patch antenna itself is active which means it will need to be powered via BIOS T. Now the RTL.com version three has the ability to provide a BIOS T voltage, which then powers the patch antenna. Of course, if you own a different RTL SDR, you will need to make sure that it can supply the BIOS T voltage. If not, then of course you could make your own. Now having the BIOS T coming from your RTL SDR makes it a nice and easy solution. So you can just connect the GPS patch antenna directly to the SDR receiver. So the main two pieces of software that we need is GNSS-SDRLib and RTKLib. Now, if you're using an RTL SDR.com V3 SDR, then you also need the BIOS T driver, which I'll talk about later on. So first off, let's go ahead and download the GNSS software by clicking on the code button and then download the zip. The second piece of software, RTKLib, can then be downloaded from rtklib.com and just select the latest version from the list. So you now have the two software packages that we will need to receive GPS signals and then decode them. And if you are needing the RTL version three BIOS T driver, go ahead and download that too. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download all of these packages. Once you have all of these, we now need to move them from your downloads folder to another folder of your choosing. Now, once copied, just right mouse click on each of them and extract the files. Personally, I use WinRAR for extracting files from these types of archives, but you can use your preferred method. So you should now have three folders. That's assuming you're using a V3 SDR. Connect your GPS antenna to your SDR receiver and then place the GPS antenna somewhere outside with a clear line of sight to the sky. If you can mount it high and without obstruction like walls or fences, then you'll receive a better quality signal from the GPS satellites. Now go ahead, plug your RTL SDR receiver into your computer. And as mentioned before, if you're using the RTL SDR V3, we need to turn on the BIOS T. So navigate to the BT driver folder and double click on the BIOS T on batch file. This should then turn on the BIOS T. Now you don't need to do this if you're not using an RTL SDR V3, but obviously you need to make sure you've got BIOS T powering the patch. So let's navigate to the GNSS folder and then into the bin folder. You will then notice a file called gnss-sdrgui.exe and simply double click this to run. We now have to make some changes to the default configuration. Don't worry, it's actually quite easy. The first thing we need to do is select the input type. So from the drop down, select RTL SDR. Underneath here in the output section, we need to make sure that RTCM MSM is checked and the port number next to it is set to 9999. Also set the output interval to 10 Hertz. Now underneath this, you will see plot acquisition and plot tracking. Make sure that both of these are checked. Underneath this, in the MISC section, you can go ahead and enter the first few digits of your current latitude and longitude. This will help speed up the process of obtaining a GPS lock. Now over on the right hand side, we have to make sure that the GPS section is fully checked. Also the GLONASS and the Galileo are also checked. Once you've double checked all the settings so they are the same as mine, go ahead and click the start button. Now, what should start to happen is that multiple windows will start to open and then close. Don't worry, this is normal, but it does take a few minutes to finish. 
And once it's finished, you'll hopefully be presented with a few smaller windows showing GPS reception for each of the satellites your GPS antenna can see. Now, if you have any issues starting this application or any errors with regards to RTL STR dongle, then make sure you have the drivers installed and you can do this using the Zardig driver installation. The best way to check if your RTL STR dongle is being recognized would be to start an application like SDR Sharp and just check to see if it's recognized. Now, hopefully you won't have any issues and you'll see all of these small windows as shown here. As this indicates we're receiving GPS signals and decoding them, we can now go ahead and run the second piece of software. Navigate to the RTK lib folder and then into the bin folder and run the rtknavi.exe file. You should then be presented with a screen like this. We now need to configure this software to take the data stream from the previous piece of software. And to do this, click the I button on the top right. Put a check against Rover, change the type to TCP client, and then click the three little dots to the right. In this pop-up window, you'll need to enter localhost, type it in as localhost in the TCP server address entry box, and then 9999 in the port text entry box, and then click OK. Now, one last thing to change here is the format. Change this from RTCM to to RTCM3 and then click OK. You can now go ahead and click the start button. Now you should now start to see some bars indicating which satellites are being received. Once they start turning green, you should then start seeing your rough latitude and longitude being displayed on the left side column. Now this can take a while to start showing data, but if it hasn't started, then try restarting the whole software packages. I've experienced issues where restarting the GNSS software has cured them and it started working. If you're still experiencing issues, then try repositioning your GPS antenna. Now at the bottom of the main window, there is a button titled plot. If you press this, a new window will open where you'll see a marker madly drawing lines as it records the decoded GPS coordinates. Now on this new window, there are further two buttons at the top. One is to open Google Earth and the other is to open Google Maps within an embedded window. Now when pressed, it opens up another window in which Google Maps should be embedded and show your location. However, I was unable to get Google Maps to load in this window. I did perform some research and even asked a question on the GitHub page, but without response. So unfortunately, using this software, I was unable to get my position shown on a map. But what is interesting is that in the top right corner of RTK Navi, the button O opens up a new window, which provides us with some output options. It looks like we can output this data stream to file, serial, TCP server or client, and we can even change the format, such as to NMEA. This means it might be possible to use other third party software to take this data stream and plot it on a map. Now I've only touched the tip of the iceberg in terms of features of these software packages, but I think this shows you a good starting point to install the software, get it working and start experimenting. If any of you guys have used this software before or even know how to fix the Google map issue, then please feel free to leave a comment below. Until the next video guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.